You will not believe what plumbers are going to be doing in the future. I mean, think about it. When plumbers even schedule your call, they're gonna have to ask, is anyone sick? Has anyone been sick? Has anybody been quarantined? Is anybody running fever? There's a lot of things that we need to know. Before you even want us coming in, wouldn't you wanna know the same things for us? Because we're gonna be able to tell you, hey look, our guys have not been sick, they're not running fever, they're showing no signs or any symptoms of anything at all before we ever send them to your house. Why is that gonna be important? We wanna protect you just as much as we want to protect our people. There's a lot of different things a lot of people are doing before they show up at your house. Number one, they're making sure their tools are clean before they ever bring them in. And that's a really smart thing to do. Most plumbers really do love their tools. So a smart plumber these days is going to take the time to wipe everything down before he leaves your house. He didn't want to get anything from any house that may stay on a hard surface for a few days, get it on a tool, and then grab that tool again later. While he's working in your house, maybe he's got on gloves. All my guys are supposed to be wearing gloves. It's been for their protection for a long time. Now it's a little more serious. But if they're wearing gloves and they set something down in your bathroom, you've got someone that has been in your house that has the coronavirus that has actually touched something. And not just the coronavirus, any virus. Think about this. This is going to be a new future for us. This is a whole new normal. So say he sets a tool down puts it in his toolbox, then he gets home that evening and he needs to fix something at his house. He doesn't grab any gloves because he's comfortable at home. Now he grabs that tool. If that tool is laid on a surface that has coronavirus and it transferred over to the tool, now he's been in contact with it. We're gonna have to all start doing things different. So I wanna talk about a few things that hopefully plumbers are gonna be doing that's gonna be protecting you and your family, them and their family from now on. Think about it, we're all wearing face masks now, or we're supposed to if we're out in public areas. Well, if a plumber walks into your house, wouldn't you feel safer if he was wearing a face mask the entire time he was in the house? I know he's gonna feel safer because even though people tell us, look, there's nobody sick, there's nobody running fever, maybe someone doesn't know. What about face shields? I've been plumbing for a long time and I'm pretty bad about not wearing face shields for anything. Even if I run a closet auger, a plunger, something like that, I don't always wear eye protection. But now, if anything there can splash up on you or anything can while you're taking apart anything or working anything, even just running a sewer machine, are most people wearing face shields? We haven't really in the past, but now, in the future, it's probably a wise decision. Now the gloves. I told you my guys are supposed to wear gloves all the time. I like to wear them whenever I walk in people's houses. I like to keep them on. But I'm telling you, sometimes you get in a position you want to take them off. But what we've got to remember now is we don't know what we're touching. We don't know what we're getting our hands into. Have you ever been in a situation, either plumbing or working on plumbing, where you wish you had gloves on? If you have, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of gloves you wore. My guys are supposed to be wearing latex gloves and they're lime green for Texas Green Plumbing. That just happens to be the name of the company that I own. Booties, what about that? If we wear booties into a house, when we come out, we take them off. There's a lot of cross-contamination that can happen here. We're wearing them in, we're walking on surfaces that, like I said, you said you're not sick, but we don't know 100% that maybe you've already been in contact with it, you're starting to develop it yet, you're just not showing any symptoms yet. And this is something we all need to think about in the future. Everybody does not know that they have it. Think about it. People don't just walk into the hospital and say, oh look, I've got the coronavirus. They walk in and say, hey, I'm feeling kind of bad. It may be the flu, it may be a cold, it may be a hangover. But here's what the deal is. It could also be a virus that they've spread around their house and now a plumber or any other residential trades person walking in can get into. Now what about Tyvek suits? Whenever I worked in the silicone chip plant, what we had to do if we went into a clean room is wear a Tyvek suit. This completely blocks any outside particles from getting onto me or any particles on my skin from getting onto it. Look, that's gonna be hard for a plumber to do because number one, they're very restraining. Number two, it gets hot in that suit, especially all day. So if you're in one house doing a lot of different things, you're kind of up the creek. But also, what if you rip it and you don't even know it? Now you're putting yourself in a bad position. And it also, it takes a lot of time to smock up and smock down. You put this thing on, put the gloves on, you tape it up so nothing can get in or out. Guys, it's almost like hazmat. You have to go in that protected. Is that what we should be doing? Absolutely. Are we going to? 
No, it takes too long. It's not fair to the customer because we've got to charge you more because now we're there longer just to get dressed and undressed. That's kind of crazy, but there are times it's possible. When we're working under a house doing a sewer pipe replacement, we know that when we cut the old pipe loose, look, there's stuff in it and we're going to get it on our clothes. We're going to get it on our hands. So wearing a suit, wearing gloves, wearing the things we need to wear, that's something we do because we know for sure. But guys, in the future, with a virus or a disease or something like this, when we walk into a house, we're gonna have to start presuming it's there and we're gonna have to protect ourselves from it. Now, what do we do when we're done? Literally, I love it because a lot of the liquor producing companies have gone to making sanitizer. We literally got some in the other day. It was in a vodka box. It looked like vodka, smelled kind of like vodka, but it's sanitizer. And my guys loved it because they can literally spray it on their hands. Now we were mixing our own, but who knows what the exact percentages are, what you hear. So we bought a case of sanitizer and trust me, stuff's not cheap anymore, but my guys know if they touch anything, if they walk in and out of a house, they need to spray it on them. Once they finish a job, they need to spray it on them. There's a lot of different things that we can do, but that is one that is huge. What about just handy wipes? What are you doing? Are you wiping down your tools? Because if I lay my tools down in somebody's house, I either want to spray them down with sanitizer or wipe them down with some kind of sanitizer wipes to make sure that there's not anything on it that could lead to problems. Like I said earlier, if I go home and work on something this evening and I grab a wrench out of my truck that I use today, and now I'm exposed to the coronavirus, now I go hug my grandkids, hug my wife. Did I just expose them to it? We've got to think from now on, every house that we walk into is contaminated. And we have to look at it that way and think about it that way. What can we do? Drink plenty of fluids. Don't touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Don't touch anything on your face or your body where you can get it into your body. Wash your hands on a regular basis. Stay six feet away from anybody and don't let them touch anything. Literally nowadays our iPads, we don't even ask people to sign it. We're good. We don't want them to touch it for their protection and ours. So tell me this, what has changed? What are you doing now that you didn't do before to protect yourself and your company? So if you found value in this, watch the other video about what plumbers can do to protect themselves. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.